And that is how I switch into computer science. Thanks for watching. <laughs> no, but really guys, it really did take me a long time to figure out if I wanted to switch in computer science or not. And for this video, I wanted to share my journey into switching to computer science and give some tips for those of you who are thinking about computer science and some advice for helping you make your decision. Okay, so I wanted to start off by giving some personal information about my background. So my parents, like many other Asian parents, immigrated to the United States when I was seven years old and brought me along with them. So my parents used to be doctors in China, and so when they came to the United States, they wanted to continue being doctors, but apparently there were different medical laws in the United States versus China, so they had to study for a test in order to be able to become doctors but they didn't have time to do that because they had a visa and they had me in the United States. So they ended up as researchers here. So when I was growing up, throughout my whole childhood, my parents had always told me that they wanted me to be doctor, they wanted me to be a doctor and that I should study medicine when I grew up because it was a very safe job and it was a very stable one. So when I was growing up, I didn't have any ambitions or passions towards anything else because I had always believed that I was going to be a doctor when I was growing up. And so throughout middle school and high school, I was studying many different sciences and classes and I was working in the research labs with my parents because they really wanted me to get um, into the environment of becoming a doctor. And although I really didn't like working in the lab at the time, I thought it was a necessary stepping stone. So in high school, um, I did actually take an AP coding class, was AP computer science. And um, I originally wanted to basically see what computer science was all about. And, but my teacher really didn't like the class and he was really uninterested in those topics. And so I didn't really have like a good like impression of computer science at the time. And during my senior year of high school, when I was figuring out what career paths I wanted to go into and what majors I wanted to be, um, I was talking to my counselor and I told him that I wanted to do something that was very people facing. And he said that I should probably go into becoming a doctor because, you know, a doctor, you can talk to a lot of patients. And I had this preconceived notion that computer science majors and software engineers would be people who would end up coding in the basement of a building um, behind a computer screen for the rest of their lives. And so I really didn't want that. And so I was thinking, yeah, I'm probably going to end up with a pre-med track. And so for the first few years of university, I was actually studying chemical engineering um, with pre-med. So I was doing a lot of um, biology classes and a lot of orgo labs. And I was just like thinking like, yeah, I really didn't like this, but if it was a stepping stone towards becoming a doctor, which was eventually the end goal, then I would have to put up through it with it. But what actually happened was one summer when I was researching at my university's research lab department, um, I actually had some time to think because between um, experiments, you had some free time in order to prepare for the next experiment. And it was actually a lot of free time. So sometimes it would have like two to five hours. And um, I had some time to think about it. And I was wondering like, did I really want to spend um, basically the best years of my life, my 20s, like my mid 20s, going to medical school, studying again, and then working towards residency. And then finally being a doctor when I'm in my late 20s and early 30s. And I thought about it and I was like, um, I guess it might be time to pursue, like think about what other career paths I could possibly do and if I didn't like those other career paths then I would stick with being a doctor because I knew that I wouldn't really like the other jobs either and so I started thinking about what other career paths I could take. Alright, so here's some advice in the form of a few steps for those of you thinking about switching to computer science. The first thing you should do is to do research and in this area I mean asking other people for advice. And so I asked my sister for advice. Hey, May, do you think I should switch into computer science? No, but you should invest in Bitcoin. And my family for advice. Hey, Mom, should I do computer science? No. It's not good work. And even my friends for advice. Huh, that definitely did not work out as I thought it would. But for real, the first step is to ask people who are in the career field for advice. And so what I did was talk with other students in my school who are in the same career path. At my university, the main career paths that people end up taking is investment banking, consulting, and computer science besides pre-med. So I ended up cold messaging these people on Facebook, adding them as friends and asking them if I could take them out for a meal in order to talk about their own career paths. Furthermore, if you can't find people that have the same career path as you, I highly suggest cold connecting with people on LinkedIn of random people who are in those career paths and asking them about their job experience 
And I'm sure it seems daunting at first, but a lot of people out there really want to help others. And so they'll definitely provide you with really good information about their own career paths in general. Some things that I would suggest asking them include, what do you like and not like about the job? What is the work-life balance of the job? What kind of people do you think is right for the job? And how did you get into the job? And this went on for a few months. And after doing a lot of research and talking with a lot of different people in many different career paths, I came up with the conclusion that investment banking did have a lot of money involved. However, many people said they were really stressed by the time because a lot of them were working around 100 to 120 hours a week on the high end. And so I really didn't want to work that many hours. And although they said that there were really good exit opportunities with investment banking, including private equity, I honestly didn't think that was for me. And for consulting, I actually liked it a lot better than investment banking because from the people that I talked to, the consultants, they said that you get to travel a lot, which I thought was really cool. And they also said that there was a really good work-life balance and that you get to talk with a lot of people all the time, a lot of social interactions going on, which I highly prioritized at the time. However, when I went to a career fair for consulting, a lady told me that traveling can be fun, but when you're asked to do it all the time and you don't have your own schedule, then it gets really tedious and boring at times. And so I had consulting in the back of my mind, but I didn't think too much about it. Finally, for computer science, honestly, I feel like I was just flexed on by a lot of my peers at the time. When I asked them about computer science, they were just talking about how they got paid a lot of money and there was free food at some companies and they had a really good work-life balance like a lot of them who had internships at facebook google and like top startups like airbnb said that there was like a lot of social interaction going on like everyone was helping each other out with their code and there was a lot of team bonding events going on and they just overall had a really fun time at their internships and so honestly, at that point, I was like thinking between computer science and consulting, but definitely putting computer science above there because like I didn't really see that many negative aspects about it. And so that brings me up to the second thing that you should do, and that's to make a pros and cons chart. So by now I was thinking about going to computer science because I was also a very technical person because I was doing chemical engineering. And I also heard a lot of good feedback from the software engineers that I talked to. And so I wanted to compare the long-term aspects about becoming a doctor versus becoming a software engineer. And so I made a chart for the pros and cons of being a doctor to start. And so for some of the positive aspects of being a doctor, there is high job stability. Um, now that in the market with the coronavirus and everything, I've come to realize that um, having a very stable job is quite necessary. And so being a doctor will guarantee a high job stability in the future. There's also a high paycheck. And in this aspect, the average salary of doctors is almost $313,000, which is actually pretty insane. And it's also a very respected position. So a lot of people look up to doctors. And so it's a very good position to talk about with your kids um, or to talk about with other people. And finally, there is a very strong medical community once you become a doctor. I do have a few friends whose parents were doctors and they told me about their really good experience having that strong medical community um, with them. However, some of the cons of being a doctor were thought about as well, including there's a huge cost for medical school and for insurance once you start becoming a doctor. Furthermore, essentially you have to do four years of medical school plus residency plus specialization within your 20s, which really takes away from time that you could be doing other things. And since I wasn't really passionate about being a doctor at the time, it wasn't something that I really cared about going through. And also you had to do on-call if you become a specific type of doctor. And I heard that a lot of people do drop out of medical school. And a lot of people were scaring me with percentages, including like, 80 to 90% of people in medical school to drop out, which I knew wasn't right at the time, but it just seems so scary that so many people would even think about telling others that a lot of people do drop out. 
Okay, so now I wanted to basically analyze the pros and cons of being a software engineer. And so there are many pros and cons with being a software engineer too. Um, and to start off, one of the pros of being a software engineer was that you get to work right after college if you did find a job. And at my school, basically the average salary that software engineers or new grad software engineers got was $90,000, which I thought was an insane amount for me to live a really good life. Also at many places, they're striving towards better work-life balance. So I thought that was really cool. A lot of my friends were working at some tech companies in the Bay Area and they were working 40 hours a week and they said they had a lot of time to do what they wanted to do. And another pro about software engineering is the creativity aspect about it. Um, technical skills help you create things that would be able to solve problems within the world. And I thought it was really cool to be able to use coding and solve problems within my own community. And also the tech space that I really um, ventured into was really friendly um, and they always were really welcoming and they taught me so many things. I went to a lot of hackathons and I really love the people there. So some cons about jobs, to, some cons about software engineering include job stability. And so I really didn't think software engineering would have a problem with this because so many people were going to software engineering. There were so many jobs opening up for them. But after the coronavirus hit, I can see what people are talking about when it's like you can lose your job and that's a really scary thing. And so I just like realized that that is like a huge con about software engineering that I didn't see before. So another con about software engineering is that um, you do have to be, have to look for jobs, interview a lot and be good at coding and do it a lot. So in essence, I really di I didn't know if I really liked coding in the beginning, um, but over time I began to like it. So in the beginning, I was kind of putting this as my cons because essentially like, I don't know if I wanted to do coding for the rest of my life. Yeah, and so these are some of the things that I looked into when talking about becoming a software engineer or becoming a doctor. And the third thing you should do is to just take some classes on the relative career path that you're going into. And for this case, I wanted to take some coding classes. I put this as my third point because I had a really busy pre-med schedule at the time, so it was really hard to fit in any other classes that I wanted to take. So I felt that if I wanted to put in a class, I would really have to be dedicated to learning about that particular class. And so after doing the pros and cons chart and after talking with people in the career path, I thought it might be time to try computer science. And so in college, I took a few basic computer science principal classes and also Java data structures. And I thought it was really fun because my teacher was honestly such an amazing teacher, but the classes were definitely really hard. And I feel like there's different types of computer science majors out there. And one of those types are people who knew they were gonna do computer science and who were really interested in tech when they were younger. And so when they went into these college courses, they were really good at what they did. And I wasn't one of them because I just like thought about switching to computer science. And so the classes were actually really tough for me. And I had no idea what was going on most of the time. And at this time, I actually considered switching to CS after taking those few classes and seeing the easy schedule that software engineers have down the path because I saw that, you know, you don't have to go to medical school again. You can just go directly to work. And some of my friends who are already working were having a lot more fun at work than in college. And so I was like, wow, that seems like a lot of fun. So I wanted to try it out. Um, and so I actually didn't completely switch. I was actually pre-med in CS for a while because I still didn't want to give up the aspect of being pre-med. And also because I kind of was spent so much time in pre-med already that I just kind of felt like I wasted a lot of my years at the lab doing that kind of stuff. Um, so at this time I was pre-med in CS and what actually changed me was when I actually worked as a software engineering intern for Nordstrom Technologies and yeah, it's the clothing company but it was really a ton of fun and I got to meet a lot of cool people and the internship was just really chill and I learned so many new things and the people were really cool. I had a lot more social interaction than I thought. And yeah, so these are some steps to take if you're thinking about switching to computer science. They might not work for everyone, but they definitely work for me. And since I'm an incoming software engineer, I'm always open for any questions that you may have. And since I just started this YouTube channel, um, I definitely want to produce more content for you guys about software engineering life in general and about the college experience. And so this also concludes how I ended up in a room in my mom's basement coding behind a screen every day with little social interaction.